This is a video where I'm going to be cleaning every single one of my plants. And that is because I'm trying to prevent pests, try to keep them clean, keep them shiny and nice, and yeah, that's really all I'm doing. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we have never met before, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. So as it is approaching the end of the year, I felt that it was appropriate that I do some sort of all out cleaning for my house plants. I actually asked on my Instagram stories for what you guys do with all of your plants at the end of the year or if you had any sort of regular cleaning schedule for your plants. And I was relieved to find that a lot of people had these sort of routine cleanings and that the things that they were using was really simple. I feel like in the winter time, it's a really great time for spider mites and other sorts of disgusting little bugs to creep their way into our homes and into our plants. And I just want to make sure that my plants are safe this winter from any sort of threats that could occur. Now I'm gonna say something and I'm gonna knock on wood as I say it. But I have had very, very little issues when it comes to pests. I have had one mealybug outbreak, which I documented on my channel here. And I will tell you in full transparency, that plant actually didn't make it. But I really think that it was because of things that were other than the mealybugs. I've had a lot of issues with that Hoya linearis and it just did not, <laughs> it was just not happy in my house. And maybe I'll try again in a few years or when I'm in a different place, but as of right now, I just don't think that I'm fit for a Hoya linearis and that is completely fine. Sometimes there are plants that are just not good for our environment and sometimes it's good to like cut those ties and <laughs> understand what plant relationships are healthy for you and the linearis was just not good for me. So I said goodbye to that plant and one other time I have had thrips. It was on my variegated elephant ear alocasia. Yes, the one that I brought back from Florida, it got thrips and as soon as I noticed it, I took it outside and just kind of let nature run its course. The plant did not make it as it was very hot and I didn't even think to save the bulb, which now I look back and I'm so upset that I didn't save the bulb because you can grow back alocasias from the bulb and I just didn't know that at the time. So if I ever make a trip to Florida again, I will definitely be scouting out one of those again. But anyway, so I have only ever dealt with mealybugs and thrips. So whenever people ask me what my advice is as far as bugs go for various different types, there's so many kinds, I just can't speak to it because I have never experienced them before. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to kill spider mites if I've never had them myself. I feel like a lot of the reason I have never had any sort of serious pest outbreak in my house, and when I say that I mean like when the pest is taking over multiple plants at once, the ones I've had have been isolated incidents. So I really think that part of the reason that is is because I actively clean the leaves and every time I water a plant, I'm spraying it off as if it was getting like rain on it. I don't know, I feel like that has really helped me out. In any case, today I'm going to be doing some more preventative measures. I'm gonna show you right now all the products that I purchased for this. And also you should know that you can use a lot of household items like rubbing alcohol and dish soap and water to do basically the same exact thing. And a lot of people said that in their responses to my Instagram question and they have beautiful collections. So I'm sure that it'll be fine. If you want to see that list, I will put it in a little scrolling thing at the end of this video. I would highly, highly suggest you check it out because as I say all the time, there are so many ways to do plant things and my way is not the only way. So I hope that before you follow my instructions and whatever I do, that you would do your own research to make sure that that is best for you and your plants. So the products that I'm going to show you today, I actually got from my local garden center. It was Lowe's, I'm pretty sure, but really any local garden center or nursery should probably have something like these tools and items. I've really been trying to buy locally more often because I have noticed just the amount of waste that ordering off of Amazon creates. And granted, I do reuse a lot of it for shipping out plants, but I actually had just like a massive pile of trash just sitting over in this corner because I didn't want to throw away all of the packing materials because I knew that I could reuse them. But the thing is, the pile just kept getting bigger and bigger 
and the demand for me sending things out was not as high as the amount of things coming into my home. So while I know that I suggest products that you can find on Amazon, I would 100% suggest that you try to find them locally first because that not only benefits the local business that you're supporting, but also you're cutting down on shipping and packaging waste, you know what I mean? So. Just something to be aware of, it's something that I've noticed about myself lately and I'm definitely trying to combat that with shopping locally more often. I think that I was just getting really lazy and not wanting to ask for help in the stores and not wanting to spend time looking. It was just so much easier to click add to cart and then it would be here in two days. So with that being said, I'm going to show you three items that I got for this end of year cleaning for my plants that I actually picked up from my local garden center. and. Here they are. So this first one is Neem Oil, and I think it is the Garden Safe brand, and I thought that this one would be a really great one. I have not really experimented with different kinds of brands of neem oil and soaps and stuff like that. I kind of feel like I'll try it out, and if it doesn't work, I won't buy that one again. So I'm gonna try this one out because it was what was available to me locally, so it must not be too bad. The next thing that I picked up is Insecticidal Soap from the same company, Garden Safe. And I really like insecticidal soap because it is just a quick little thing that you can spray on your plants and you don't have to worry about it hurting your plants in any way. I mean, both of these things are natural products, so if you want to avoid using pesticides or chemicals in your home, I would definitely suggest these products. And the last thing that I grabbed from my local garden center was this pressure mister. And I'm planning on putting um, diluted neem oil in here and just spraying it all over my plants and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to use this. It feels like it's very intense. <laughs> so anyway, that is all the stuff that I got for this. I actually got the idea to buy this off of Kaylee Allen's Amazon Favorites video. Okay, so as I'm cleaning up my plants and clearing them out of the shelves, I'm noticing that there's just a lot of nastiness on these shelves. It's mostly just dirt and dust and these types of things just is a, I don't know, a breeding ground for nasty things to continue to grow. So really every time I clean my plants off of the shelves and water them, I will wipe off all of my shelves with something like this, just an all-purpose cleaner. I like Mrs. Meyers. It's clean and it smells really good. Actually, you can see that I'm about to run out, so I need to get some more. This kind of stuff still happens even if I'm using a saucer, so it's just crazy to me. My plants can accumulate this much of a mess. And honestly, if you have something like a hydro system, like you're using passive hydroponics, you really don't have to worry about dirt. <laughs> but I guess if your plant falls, there's water everywhere, but really that's like, that's the least of your worries at that point, so. And that looks a million times better. So now let's go wash off these plants. So now it's time to make my neem oil mixture for this mister here. And in order to do this, I just peeled open the label on the back and I'm reminding myself what exactly I need to do. So here it says that I need to mix two to four teaspoons, sorry, two to four tablespoons per gallon of water. Okay, I'm doing some conversions here, and this bottle holds up to two liters. Two liters is about half of a gallon. So if this says that I can have two to four tablespoons per gallon, I'm going to put in two tablespoons of neem oil, and the rest will be water. Okay, so for my smaller plants, I'm going to be treating them in my kitchen sink, just so I can keep control. I don't know, it's just a lot easier to bring my smaller plants into here. And so I'm moving away all food products from the sink so that it won't get on any food. And then I'm just going to start pressure spraying. So let's get going on that. All right, so I've let the neem oil just kind of hang out for a little bit, and now I'm going to get in there with this insecticidal soap to just round out the treatment.
thank you guys so much for checking out this video. It really means so much to me. I hope that this is a great way to close out your year. I hope this video was helpful to help you create some sort of cleaning schedule for yourself with your plants. I think that this sort of stuff is very important and I'm very excited to implement this into my day not daily, but yearly schedule. Probably every quarter I'll do this. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, make sure you leave a comment down below. That really helps me to know if people enjoyed the video or not. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you liked what I had to say and want to hear more. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.